Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress 2014 Anvil Quested. And it is the beginning of summer, the beginning of the third month of the 159th year of this world, Nam Natam. And we are besieged by a vile force of darkness. And about time, too, I was beginning to think that the goblins had forgotten about us. But before we face this challenge head on, let's profile a dwarf. Number 203. One of our brand new dwarves, 203, is Sisyphean. So. Let's go. No, that's not what I want to do. Vile Force of Darkness. Okay. Oh! There he is. Sisyphean is storing an item in a stockpile. Sisyphean is not related directly to anybody in our fortress, but is the younger... Huh. Younger... What gender is Sisyphean here? Let's see. Sisyphean is a man. Okay. So, he is the younger brother of Mikus and the older brother of Morin, the nephew of Brunor Battlehammer, okay, so he's in the royal family, the nephew of Dr. Congo, the nephew of Crom the Historian, the uncle of Toadface, the uncle of Aerith, who I named Wunderkind, since it's our legendary child, the uncle of Doramos, the cousin of Mind Freezer, the cousin of Baronet Battlehammer, and that's that. Any enemies? No, I would expect not. Alright. So... Sisyphean. There we go. Sisyphean... Imesh Medtab, or Sprinkle Blockade, is a dwarf of the unassigned caste, 42 years old. Within the last week, he felt bliss dining in a legendary dining room and interest seeing a fine seat. He was horrified 36 times, however, after witnessing death. Bliss, sleeping in a very good bedroom. Delight, having a truly decadent drink. Satisfied at work. Contentment, having a wonderful drink. And contentment, having a pretty decent drink. So, apparently Sisyphean likes to drink. Which is fine, because he is a dwarf, and that is what dwarves do. He is a very rusty, talented pump operator, an adequate weaver, and an adequate lie maker, though rusty. His highest mutable skill is weaver. He never is the slightest bit cheerful about anything. Ooh, a real Debbie Downer is Sisyphean. No wonder he drinks so much. He almost never feels discouraged. He often feels lustful. He has a greedy streak. He sometimes acts with little determination and confidence. He has an overinflated sense of self-worth. Wow, God, Sisyphean, what a winner you are. He can occasionally lose focus on the matter at hand. He isn't particularly curious about the world and is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture. He has a tendency toward forming deep emotional bonds. Except... Yeah, whatever. He doesn't seek out excitement. He does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity. He does not value skills related to fighting. He values family, but he does not respect the law. He values artwork, and he dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Well, all right. Let's see here. He is tall. His copper eyes have large irises. His sideburns are clean-shaven. His very long mustache is neatly combed. His very long beard is arranged in double braids. His long hair is tied in a ponytail. His nose is extraordinarily broad. His somewhat narrow, tall ears have nearly fused lobes. His eyelashes are quite long. His hair is chestnut. His skin is copper. Sisyphean likes kaolinite, silver, green zircon, mangrove wood, crystal glass, hemp plant, fiber fabric, the color silver. So he likes silver and the color silver. He's a big fan of the silver. He likes gems, short swords, 
large gems, and short fin mako sharks for their speed. When possible, he prefers to consume giant bat, hagfish, sweet potato plants, quinoa beer, and peaches. He absolutely detests lizards. He has a natural ability with music, a good kinesthetic sense, and good intuition, but he has poor focus, a meager ability with social relationships, an iffy memory, poor creativity, and poor spatial sense. And that is Sisyphean. All right, well, that's all well and good, but now we need to defend our fortress. So first things first, is anyone outdoors? That should be no, and I think that is correct. So let's lock up the fortress. And let's set our military alert to danger for our civilians. Okay, we are going to set up our ranged marks dwarves, like so. So squads A and H will go up here. Actually, let's put them more this way, so they have more of a firing arc. Move here, and B and I will move here. Excellent, everybody's ready to go. And let's go. All right, so what do we got here? We have a bunch of goblins. Anybody special? They didn't bring that many trolls this time, although maybe they'll come later. Let's see. Anyone interesting? Not yet. Not yet. We have some recruits. But otherwise, just regular troops. No elite troops. What in the heck is a flesh ball? It's a giant ball of flesh, I guess. Alright, third cavern lair. Fun place to be. Okay. Okay. Oh, here come the trolls. All right. So we have a large group here. We will welcome them with open arms. Hey, what's that? You're different. You are... Oh, just the recruit. Okay, so recruits just look kind of silly. And yes, here comes the thousand trolls. Here we are. So a whole ton of trolls. Still no elite anything. Which means, unfortunately, that killing these folks will not give any of our dwarves notable kills. Maybe one of them will become notable from killing the dog. But currently, they don't have any notable kills. So they're not notable. Which is really lame, if you ask me. And our guys are there! They're there and ready to go. It's going to take the goblins a bit of time to get down here. Let's take a look at my tree farm. As you can see, the trees are kind of expanding. They're growing out wider. You can start to see branches, although the mushrooms haven't really done anything. Right now, they're just thin stalks. So, oops. So, come on, guys. Time's a-wasting. I guess while we're waiting for them, we can look at the uh, four historical writings that we didn't see last time. So... Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of Catnip, the dwarf, and Rule Seed, the blizzard of Peking, the Hazelwood Shield by Urus Mikado. Catnip is raising the shield. Catnip created the shield and Anvil Quested in the late winter of 158. This is an exceptionally designed image of Fyodor. Fence Lakes, the dwarf, and a pigtail fiber tunic by Erst Mikado. Fyodor is raising the tunic. It is in honor of the tunic he designed in the early winter of 158. This is an exceptionally designed image of dwarves by Erst Mikado, and it's about the founding of Anvil Quested in 150 by the Mountain of Distraction. And this is Godin Past Irons, the dwarf, and Isaac Callskunk, the Willful Yell, the Rock by Erst Mikado. All right, cool. And also, in case you noticed, I shrank this. I was told by Shortman that I actually made it too big. I actually made the one for bridges, not spikes, so I shortened it. And also the door, I attached to a lever and have it open. You have to have it forced open like that. I also created a new stockpile down here for bolts of silver, iron, and steel. And the way I am 
The way I'm making it so that I know which spikes I've attached to the trap and which I have not is I've set a burrow called connected spikes. And so you can see the ones I've attached and every time I attach a new one, which by the way is a very long and drawn out process, I raise the size of the burrow. That's how I do it. And these guys are almost at the dog. Looks like they're only entering the fort from one side. Sometimes when you get big sieges, they come in from multiple sides. But not, not an anvil quested. They tend to come from the south. And that dog is going to have a bad day. Okay. So now they're getting close. So let's... I have all weapon traps here, just to give them a little hello, and all my cage traps are here. So in case a leader gets caught in a cage trap, it'll be in a place where my Marks Dwarves can shoot him. So now, let's go with Oscar, Throsil, Bavette, oops, not Bum Shafes, Bavette, Elena Blades, and let's give the Awesome Possums some work too. Why not? And they are all going to go here. And if I'm lucky, one of them won't charge out because there's enough in the way. You know what? I should probably build another wall here to reduce their visibility. That would be a good idea. But okay, the fun is about to start. Here come, of course, trolls first. They're faster, I guess, than the goblins. That one hit a weapon trap and didn't get past it. Okay, Gotrek, that's cool. Gotrek named his Highwood Shield Lid and Now. Which apparently means the tightnesses of lulling. Huh. Kind of an odd name, all things considered. All right, everybody's here and ready to go. If anybody makes it past my weapon traps, I mean, I only have, like, a handful of them. I didn't expect them to just kill everything. I may have to dismantle them. Yeah, that, that may be the case, because these trolls don't seem to know what to do. The goblins can occasionally dodge weapon traps. Come on, guys, where are you? I'm not in pause, am I? Oh, there's the recruit. All right, they're coming. Oh, yeah, send the recruit in first. Good way to go. Yeah, maybe I should... The first siege in, like, three years, and they're all getting killed by the weapon traps. Somebody make it through. Please. Okay, he's looking... Oh, well, he was looking good. Come on, guys. Welcome to Anvil Quested. Come on. I know the FPS is really crappy, but you can be a little faster than this. No? You can't? The dwarf who is first, first in line here is Gotrek Gurnison with her baby, Rotrek Copperson. Great. Okay, one guy looks like he made it through the first round. Oh, now they're coming a little faster. Come on, guys. Nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to fear but fear itself. Okay, so for next episode, I'm going to take down all my weapon traps. They are apparently amazing. Come on, guys. <laughs> Are there any more? Oh, yeah, a bunch of trolls. Or are the trolls running away? What are they doing? No, they're coming in. All right. This is the entire goblin menace here. You know what? Maybe I should put the weapon traps, like, in a line here. 
So at least the guys can shoot him with arrows as well. Or maybe even all the way down here. You can see goblin bones flying everywhere. <laughs> Alright, well. Let's see. The goblin swordsman. He gives in to the pain. He's vomiting. He's not having a good day. Goblin crossbowman. Knocked unconscious. The iron battle axe strikes the goblin crossbowman in the head, and the severed part sails off in an arc. So it's like Indiana Jones in the Lost Crusade. They're going through this tunnel, and they're just getting rocked. I don't remember weapon traps being this overpowered. But I wanted to let my dwarves get some more skills before the inevitable showdown with the demons. Okay, here's the plan. Here is the plan. Oscar. Throwsill. Or Throwsill. Bavette. Elena Blades. And should I send the possums? Are they ready? They're not really ready. Alright, kill. And let's select a rectangle. My weapon trap should not hurt my own dwarves. And let's kill all these guys. Alright. Here it comes. Many of them are scared at witnessing the horror. So. There may be casualties in this, though. Okay. It's a bunch of chaos. No one's fallen yet, I don't think. Wow, we're really mixing it up. Oh, there's the baby! Alright. Have we lost anyone yet? No, it doesn't look like it. Let's see what's going on. Arvalorn Carp Killer? is fighting trolls. The troll keeps missing him. Death is all around us. This cannot horrify me. Well, the baby is getting good combat experience. Alright, possums. You're in. Because it looks like these trolls are taking a while to fall. Okay, possums are in. Here's just to be the trolls. Yeah, the goblins have all been killed. Okay, we lost somebody. Arvalorn Carp Killer. The trolls are formidable. But maybe that troll will be notable now. Wow, what a battle. Let's see here. Arvalorn Carp Killer. There he is. Let's see what did him in. The troll strangles him in the throat. The troll releases the joint lock of the troll's left hand on the Arvalorn's left lower arm. After nine pages of battle, the troll just strangled him. Okay, one of our archers is coming in? Alright, some of my units are leaving. I don't know. They're still set on kill. What are you doing, guys? Goodness. Okay, here comes replacement. Who's this? Who's this coming to join the fight? Catnip. Hmm. 
Come on, guys. I see our captains there, down here fighting these trolls. Man, these trolls must be excellent at dodging. How many are left? Quite a few. And many of the goblins, too. Where are you guys? Okay, they're up here. Wow. Okay, this is taking a while. What's going on? Leonard Yeldra, what are you doing? Nothing. The troll keeps missing you. Oh, you're... Oh, my goodness. You've fallen to the ground from overexertion. Okay, so that might be the problem. My dwarves are out of energy. Uh-oh. All right. Tough times calls for tough measures. Now, the new guys are using wood bolts, so... They can't do much, but we're going to station these guys here. And maybe they can aid in the battle somehow, so we don't lose any more dwarves unnecessarily. Why are you carrying a bin? Bronzebeard, what are you doing? This is pure chaos. I don't even know what that noise was. It sounded like a spider. Okay, here come our Marks Dwarves. Oh! We lost another one. Who did we lose? I can't even tell. There's so much going on here. Leonard Yeldra. I think he was one of our possums. I don't remember. Okay, Mark's Dwarves are here. I wouldn't hold it against you if you shot some crossbow bolts. That would certainly be nice. There we go. Someone's shooting. Are you just out of arrows? I mean, what's your problem? What's your deal, Zax? What I want. Okay, Zax has... No quiver? You don't have a quiver, Zax? Why don't you have a quiver? Oh, there it is. Elk bird. Yeah, you have bolts. You have a bunch of bolts. And how? Come on. You aren't doing any good in your quiver. Gosh, what an anticlimactic battle. It's like nothing's happening. Everybody's exhausted. Okay, enough. I wish you could turn off these stupid stockpile messages. I don't care about any of this. Danaki? Or Naki? Crazy man, I don't care that you can't access your stockpiles. I want to see if, if someone died. This is just going on. The flying bolt strikes the troll in the lower body. Dave Dog is shooting. I saw Elena Starbreeze. Yep, she's fighting. The troll keeps missing her. She's not doing anything. She must just be lying on the ground. Ex oh my gosh. That's it. The troll just keeps missing her. She hasn't even... She hasn't even... Attacked. What's going on, guys? C. D. E. F. G. Kill. Select a rectangle. Maybe they're just not... Select rectangle. Damn it. 
Okay. Just to refresh him. Alright, well, how are you guys going to stand up to demons if fighting a few trolls after years and years and years of training is knocking you out? There's so much going on, too. I don't even know if I'd notice if someone died. Throwsill is fighting. So... Th they're not doing anything. The last thing Throsil did is bashes the troll in the head with his special weapon. So they're just exhausted. I don't know what to do about that. But they're basically just being attacked by these trolls. It's like they're they're all on the ground just Oh, we lost somebody. Throsil. The squad commander. Anyone else? Did I miss anything? At least it's a different color. So it's Throsil. Throsil entered a martial trance. Grumzub created a masterpiece. This is ridiculous. This spam needs to stop. I mean, the first thing I would do if I was Toady. Throw Soul's been found dead. The first thing I would do is I would fix this so that all these cancellation things didn't clog up. Or I'd have two different reports. I'd have, like, bullshit reports and, like, really important reports. What's going on here, guys? Why are my Marks Dwarves not firing? This is a shameful display. Shamefu! What is going on here? Where's your quiver? You don't have a quiver? Or am I just missing it? Hood, dress, robe, shirt, breastplate, backpack, water skin. We have about a thousand quivers here in this fort. Yeah, Gustav does not have a quiver. Oh, well, that's because Gustav is not a Marksdorf. Alright, what do we have here? We still have quite a few trolls and quite a few goblins. And we just lost another. Bromine gear. I should be writing this down. Okay, this video is almost at 30 minutes, and nothing is happening, except my dwarves are occasionally dying. And there's really nothing I can do besides wait it out, because... I don't have any backup squads to send in. I never knew dwarves can get exhausted. That must be new in this... in this version. Normally they would have torn these guys up already. I mean, we're not even, I don't think, hitting them. They're just hitting us. Wow, this is really disappointing. So far, we've only lost four dwarves, but if they're just laying there on the ground getting attacked, who's, there's no telling how many we could possibly lose. It doesn't appear that we're even catnip. Are you doing anything? No, catnip is just getting hit. Vika. Just getting hit. 
Tim Tebow. Just getting hit. Okay, so none of my dwarves are doing anything. That's terrible. There's Hammurabi, Elena Blades. I mean, does it tell you that they're exhausted? Lady Awesomeness has no valid target? Really? Inventory? Where would you? Can I just look at them and see? Lady Awesomeness. I was attacked. Most shocking. But are you... Are you exhausted? Can you move? What is going on? She is absolutely inexhaustible. What is going on here? I mean, the dwarves are just standing around getting hit. I almost feel like there's a bug. Let's, let's cancel the orders. Okay, so a lot of the dwarves... Uh, now that I canceled the orders... They're killing trolls. Okay, that was a bug. That was a bug. I lost four dwarves to a bug, ladies and gentlemen. And that is really disappointing. That is really disappointing. Hyuga. Death. I am not upset by this. That, I'm just, that really makes me mad. So we lost one of Elena Blades. We lost, no, we lost two of Elena Blades' team. We lost one Thumper and one Big Stick. So mostly Elena Blades' team was hit pretty hard. Good thing we have some possums that are ready to jump in. But still, Oscar, will you and your team please do me the honors of taking out these last few goblins? So we can end the siege once and for all. That... That really upsets me. That really, really upsets me that I lost four dwarves and wasted all that time because of a bug. I mean, now I know, so I can unassign them, but... Whew. That's no good. And here come, here come these guys. To attack these final goblins. You know what? Let's just have everybody do it. Only these guys, let's try something different. Let's move them here. Because obviously the kill command doesn't seem to be working very well. Here we go. Here we go. Alright, so now I know. Now I know. Don't give the kill order. Give the move order. So, C, D, E, F, move over here. Any more goblins? No, I think those are those are the end of it. All right, who is leading the charge? Vika. Gustav, Catnip, Hammurabi. See how they handle it. They're all hammer dwarves. Which are actually the best kind of dwarves for goblins because they're armored, typically. What's that? Op Opal, Ansudu, Ganudivshem, Nimas? Where, Lizard? The goblins were attacked by a Were Lizard? That must have happened. That must have happened when I was, wasn't paying attention. Or that was just a corpse who's been sitting here for a long time. I don't know. 
But anyways, we've gone well over. It's like 35 minutes in. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize that there was a stupid bug that led to some dwarven deaths that were unnecessary. But I guess that's, that's what happens, and you learn. So thanks again for watching. Have a good one.